<clears throat> Hello, YouTube. I've been asked to do a um, to do a tutorial on organizing your stuff inside FL Studio um, for beginners, obviously. And I don't mean beginners as in producing people who have produced for a while, but uh, are only just starting to want to organize their projects more. <clears throat> and for that purpose, like I've been thinking, I've been thinking a lot about um, how I would do this. And I've decided to just do it as I would do it now to one of my very old projects. So you can see here, I'm going into my from 11 folder. <laughs> and it's actually not from 11. It's from earlier than 11. Way back. It's a project called Voodoo Priest. You can see I made it five years ago. And <laughs> yeah, it's gonna sound like me five years ago too. Because I have not really like that's the date I last changed it that's the date I last changed it yeah because it started earlier I think but luckily FL records the time it started so we can just have a look oh god just look at yeah there's a lot of stuff that's opening okay tidy up please i just pressed i just pressed um f12 for those of you who don't know f12 closes all focused like all unfocused open plugin windows and even the focused one i think so what do we have here this already looks very messy. Stuff is not linked to the mixer and whatever. This, oh God, where do I begin with this one? So, um, project info. Yeah. yeah, about about five years ago, a little less. As I'm recording this, it's 4th of July, so. Yeah, 4th of July, 2016. All right, so what does this sound like? I'm probably gonna have to turn this down a bit. here is a sonic mess and um, in order to tidy this up the first thing I would do is tidy up the playlist so I can see where everything actually is so yeah I seem to have kept at least my drums in this playlist track so I'm gonna call that drums right away I'm gonna color that usually I'm gonna go for a the reddish oh no usually I do blue for drums blue color and I'm gonna 
say older name clips. Yeah, I right click that, set auto name, um, <clears throat> set auto name clips. What that did is it made, it painted everything in this track, this color. So yeah. All right, now, next we have this percussion loop, which is something probably I rendered out because of CPU back then. But as you can see now with this machine, it barely goes over 20, even when recording. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new, make a new track here and put these loops on it. I'm gonna call the track perk loop. I'm gonna color it uh, some sort of shade of blue also. Now we can see every time the, this loop has been, oh yeah, it was just that, that time. Okay, that's another instance of that. So we put that on that track too. Okay. So then we've got our, what is this? It's probably, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I remember that phase. <laughs> yeah, um, that is, that is something I used to do. I used to do um, a couple of sounds, uh, a couple of bass sounds and render them into the same WAV file. Probably need to do something about that. But for now, let's just slap it on a new, on a new track. Um, that's also a bass, as I can see here. So that goes on the same playlist track. And I think, oh, this is called drums one. Or is this not drums? All right, that's okay. So that's probably used as a bass, right? There is a bass in there. Which, which one of you is the bass? This one? Hard to tell, <laughs> but I think I think this one contains enough bass frequencies to be called a bass. So let's just call you Square Bass, so we don't get confused. And which one are you? I'm gonna call you sorry base. Now apparently I've decided on greenish things to be the base color in this. So I'm going to color select it a gradient from green to green and then they'll have the same color. <clears throat> also you can move channels by pressing shift as you can see as you can see over here when I press shift and you move my mouse wheel I can rearrange channels apparently that one plays in the same pattern so what are you Not a base. So leads are gonna be reddish. Reddish. All right. So we've got these two, which are bases. So we're gonna make a new pattern. Say bass, put them in there and slap them on the bass track. I 
absolutely. Yeah. This one uses lead nodes as well. Hmm. So that's not really a base. Yeah, I've got, re got, got to reconsider that one. So base slash lead. So I probably should, what I should do is make a clone of this. Have everything that is not. Oh, those are slides, yeah. Those are slide notes. Okay. Everything that is not a slide note up here. goes into the clone. Now I can't remember where they were, so. Right. <clears throat> and now do the same thing. Dish color. Should go to the lead channel as well. Okay, so also they should be in lead pattern. Right, so what is this? That's literally just a clap. And it only happens there in the playlist. Huh. Nonetheless, I'm going to give it its own track in the playlist. Who wouldn't? Yeah, that's fine. I guess I guess since the second part of it isn't isn't there I could just do it like that yeah Clean this again. just the same bass sound as in here yeah and the lead notes are already in, in the playlist could like I could go the safe route and say make unique and make it unique anyway. So if I stretch it out, <coughs> these notes aren't gonna gonna appear in my bass lane. Right. Okay. I don't know if it's that, if that's all the bass I have. Is that all the bass I have in here? What's that? Oh, that's got the bass as well reprise so select that up here make that unique it's all the same pattern so oh. okay I'm gonna call that track base 
give it the same sort of shade of green. Okay, that's good. So, this is, oh, is this a bass? Yeah, that's a bass too. Suddenly I noticed that's also a base, so I've got my layered bases over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna make two bass tracks, which is fine. I'm gonna say auto color group. these high notes. I wasn't very careful when producing back then. We've got this here. What is this? Symbols mainly, so we're going to call it symbols. Doesn't appear anywhere else, no. Right. So now we've got now we've got these wave files. Um, that are called the chords. So we're going to give them their own ones. I'll give them their own track in the playlist. elements I chose red so So that's the pluck thing. Pluck string, all right. I call it pluck string over here. Let's give that its own track.
on point with my English today. Never gives you red when you press F2 for the first time. Got our tonal group coming together. Now we've got a lot of eff effects that are sort of scrambled. Random vocals. Okay, let's make, a, make one track for the sound effects. Oh, yeah, vengeance. Vengeance samples. That was a time when I used vengeance samples, everyone. There was a time where I did that. Actually, I'm lying. I still do that. So, yeah, there, there shouldn't be the stigma that that is on vengeance samples. They're actually good sometimes. Feels weird saying it, but actually they're quite good sometimes. Even like, especially the freaking rides and symbols for reverse stuff and, and the pre-made uh, impacts and effects. They're good. <clears throat> not so much the drum samples I'm, I'm not a fan of those they're too squashed but yeah these impacts and the rest of the things are pretty nice okay all that one sound effects usually like making my sound effects tracks purple don't know about you it's just how I roll okay now what's that pattern seems to be bass again ooh sub bass even and massive Congratulations. I don't think I had Massive back then, so that is probably a remainder of my piracy times. Full disclosure, yes, I did pirate back then. So, what is this patch? <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> That is pretty cool. Okay. Crawl base. Green. Where are the rest of my bases? There you are. And then there's actual sub base, which is also nice. So I'm gonna. No, oh god, no, that's that's the whole pattern. I just wanted to call that a sub base. And then a sub base two. And make them also a green. Oh, by the way, now is probably a good time to teach you guys about filter groups. And what I usually do is I select a whole bunch of channels that I've assigned the same roles, press Alt and G and say, for example, bass. Oh, apparently I, ha I had a bass group already, just <laughs> didn't bother to, um, yeah, didn't bother to color-coded and whatever, because 
I was like that back then. So, everything in there gets a green color. Drums group. Ooh. Yeah, they should probably get the blue color. Beat and drums. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess, I guess. Wow. <laughs> No, I actually, I don't, I don't usually separate beat and drums because there's are arbitrary, like arbitrary qualifiers for the sounds. Okay. So, let's give them the same blue. filter group because we don't need it anymore. Slide 19. Huh. Seems to be somewhere. Do those belong up there? This belongs in, into here. Then um, after a while, I don't know what this is, what this. That is then growl is a tool. Sort of green. The same green. That's sad. So we're gonna do it again. Okay. So that is a base. Therefore, it goes to the base track. <clears throat> okay. So that is also an effect. Yeah. Yeah. And these <laughs> These are random vocal chops from somewhere, from some sort of sample pack that I had back then and still have apparently so I'm gonna put them all into the same track and so chops. Oh. Okay. That's also a vocal chop. You're gonna go here. Okay.
Okay, now we're left with uh, just automation. <clears throat> I'm going to figure out what this automation is doing. Parametric EQ2, aggressive high radius, band 2. Let's open the mixer. Oh, I've got a P controller going. Um, aggressive high radius. God damn, where did I put this here? Okay, band 2. And two is a notch, so we're gonna call that one. Is there anything else on the track now? So we're gonna call that bass two notch. See how easy that is? Now we're gonna auto color group, auto name clips, and voila. Now, we know that this automation clip belongs to this pattern. And also, the sound in here. DSK World Strings Channel Volume. Huh. <laughs> Do I still have that even somewhere in there? Is there a DSK World Strings in here? Probably. Yeah, that one. Okay. So, that down here. And so, that is plucked string wall. Reverb 3x oscillator. Okay. Hmm. If I had to guess, it was this one. The one that co that's called 3x oscillator, literally. <clears throat> I think that is my bass track. Probably, like, in a mix down, I would remove the reverb. But just for organizing it before before changing anything, I would uh, call that base and um, yeah, put that up here. They is on the same track, so I would probably just do this auto color group and say. <coughs> Okay, so Malx's TBK Stereo, that is a filter, and it's on this track, yeah, set to high pass, okay, so, I'm gonna call this bass high pass, move this track to here. Clips. It's only doing something like right over here, so cut it, cut that, and just Whoop. that's sort of huh. out of this one here probably just by doing something like this if we wanted to stay 
to have the reverb stay open and the delay stay open. So that is the notch envelope. Goes on the notch track. Quiz oscillator six. Filter cutoff. EX oscillator six. Um. Oh yeah. track here. Put that on there. Loop again. Class two. Low pass. Not anywhere else in the playlist, so yeah. Massive number six, band, band one width. Mm -hmm. Massive. Which one of the EQs is it? Let's just see. Okay, so that is this match res base automation. Only doing something right over there, so you would kindly. I'm just gonna have to cut it, am I? Right. Limits are on the world swings, okay, so that goes here. Okay, so I have to turn this down even more. Right, so that is mix level. Okay, so limit plug. Same instrument, so phase mix. Okay. Yeah. 
as you can see, this is a very time consuming process, but I'm almost done with this. So <clears throat> now we've got, uh, I've just renamed that one to SFX once volume and I'm gonna rename this one to SFX one flanger. Right, so that one can go get fucked. Don't need it. Crap. Okay, so now we have sort of a system in place for, for the playlist, sort of. Uh, now we can zip all our groups. And realize that the project's actually quite small compared to, um, compared to what I do now. All right. So the next thing that I would do is optimize the channel rack. These are in a group called effects. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty smart. So let's call that plucked string as well, so we don't get confused. And chords. Okay, these aren't even linked. <laughs> yeah. should be some other red ones. Two. Because they're not in base. I think I'm thinking I'm putting them in ins too. Giving them Red paint job. So now we have, yeah, we have a pretty tidy channel rack. As far as I can see, <clears throat> maybe not as tidy as, as you'd want it, but it's pretty like you can see, you can see what stuff is basically. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next step would be obviously the mixer. And as you can see, there is just very little of actual mixing going on. Nothing is even moved or anything. So what I tend to do generally when I come across a project that is this old, um, generally I like to reset the entire mixer 
and completely do a new mix because um, uh, there is probably, yeah, that is some extreme EQ for a percussion sound. Vengeance percussions. That is some, okay. Yeah, let's just, let's just listen to this. Yeah, you see what that is? That is my sidechain track. That is supposed to be my sidechain track. <clears throat> okay, since I'm not gonna have time to redo the entire mixer, I'll just show you some ways I use to tidy it up. Especially like, um, okay, since, since I made this, I've obviously developed a procedure to make my sidechain track that is not routed to the master um, a bit more efficient. And that is a, spe a special mixer track state that's called sidechain trigger distillator. <clears throat> and what that does is, as you see now, there is actual difference between the audio signals, which uh, is achieved by these two limiters here. <sighs> Someone turned on auto linked also no apparently not i just can't have two limiters next to each other apparently so by these two limiters it's achieved by these two limiters the first one is called transients that is the kick drum going in there if i turn off the envelope follower graph you see what it does there's a long attack time allowing a lot of the, of the transient to pass through and then there's huge com yeah yeah huge amount co of compression and then just a little release on the compressor so it goes up it goes back up instantly almost and then it goes into a noise gate with the same sort of limiter uh, What's important is also that these limiters do not have any attack engaged in in the um, in the limiter section. So I've turned the noise threshold up just a bit, so that just this part gets gated away. And what we're left with, if I were to um, route that to the master. You'll hear it clicking and popping horribly because that's what's left, just the transients. Apparently that is, yeah, that's also going to the master. All of these are going to the master. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> naturally, I'll set up a drum and bus. These are all going. Yeah. These are all going in that thing. Yeah. Okay. So this track only and to this track wow that is loud and that was the kick drum that will be my drums bus that will have to do that hmm. just gonna have to select it okay so that would be my drum bus he 
usually have about 10 plus tracks. So, that's my side chain bus. I'm gonna move it just so I can have about 10 tracks for buses. was supposed to be green so green that was my drum loop send that to my drum bus okay so that goes into, into the highs of the bass
I almost didn't notice that these drums were playing all the time. <laughs> such a, I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. All right. So yeah, you get kind of carried away after a while, but this is a very time-consuming process. But I find it very rewarding. <clears throat> all right. So. We should have a bass section, a drum section, and a tonal section. Aggressive high reese sounds like a bass. Also, that's not how you spell reese. Bad bass, lows, highs, highs two. Oh no, that was a serial chain, so I shouldn't send it there. stay in order. Alright, so it's a pretty big bass section we have there. But back then there was no there wasn't anything like patcher. Um, this was made with 2011, I think. No, FL10 wasn't out yet. So I had um, FL Studio 9 when I made this. All right, oh, oh, I'm lying, I'm lying. It's what, it was 2011, so FL10 was out, but I didn't have it yet. Okay, so these are all, yeah, these are vocal chops. And <coughs> sorry, um, yeah, that's a vocal chop. Bus track. What color did I decide the vocal chops were? Okay. 
just recolor them again. That's a completely different one. So, what was that? Dot base. Uh -huh. So we we'll probably put that into the base bus too. Flat. So what do I want to do with that? That is a sound effect. That is a sound effect. That is. Uh, sound effect, sound effect, sound effect. Another base. <coughs> Boy, I really was into base back then. I still am. That's a bit worrying. supposed to be my colouring section. All right, and these are sound effects. What colour are sound effects? Some sort of pink. Right up pink, please. So I can just, just, yeah. That's okay. All these should go into the tonal bus. So, yeah. Now, as you can see, I've tidied up the mixer a bit. Organized the playlist and organized the channel rack, color coded everything. So now um, I can actually start and fix this project. Like for real, there is some major issue, major issues with the mix. Also, a very very big um, over focusing on bass. lot of stuff that is focusing oh well drums I guess drums and bass are sort of equally represented in this sort of mix but yeah and all of that for this project <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,